Good morning, evening, <laughs> good evening and welcome, start again, good evening and welcome to Friday night, it is Friday night and uh, end of the week, tired, um, but it's been a really, really good week, um, so again I want to say thank you to everyone who sent me birthday wishes, it's been a really special day yesterday, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to going to bed early tonight. Um, and uh, almost got the service ready for uh, Sunday as well. Um, so maybe get a bit of a relaxing Saturday. You can, of course, um, put your comments on here now while we're live or on YouTube a little bit later. Um, or you can email me, colin at lastdreams.org.uk. It's always good to get your emails, and get your comments and reactions. Um, we finished the section, there was only four reflections on, on the, uh, the reflection this week, um, so we're kind of starting Monday tonight, that's just the way it goes. Um, so, here we go. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought and word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Um, I think I said this morning. No, was it this morning? Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, I'm using a new computer um, to try and stop the fan noise, um, which was, no, it started again this morning, so it was after this morning that uh, I did it. So I'm using this the different computer, so hopefully the layout is all the same. Um, yeah, so we're there, we're there. Uh, the, this week um, is called Freedom. Um, I've not put the scriptures up there, but I will put them up there for Monday. It's Exodus chapter 1, verses 1 to 14, chapter 3, 1 to 15, John 8, 1 to 11, and Galatians 5, 13 to 15. Uh, you probably won't remember all of that. I'll say it again. If you want to get a, a pen quickly, I uh, will say them again. Exodus chapter 1, verses 1 to 14, and then chapter 3. 1 to 15, John chapter 8, 1 to 11, and Galatians 1, 13 to 15. I'm going to read Galatians 5, verse 13 to 15 now. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. This is Galatians chapter 5, um, verses 13 to 15. For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slave to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. 
So this week is called Freedom and today it's called A Common Reality. Slavery was a sad and common reality in the ancient world. There were at least four ways that people became slaves. First, when people suffered a terrible misfortune like sickness or an accident or a flood uh, or, or debt or theft or famine, they could quickly find themselves in danger of death by starvation or homelessness. In that desperate situation, they might be forced to sell themselves into slavery under the simple reasoning that by being alive or being a live slave was better than being a dead non-slave, the last option available. Second, when nations won a war, they often killed off all their vanquished enemies. But some nations decided to keep their defeated foes alive as slaves instead of killing them. Third way, refugees or other vulnerable minorities might be enslaved by the dominant majority. Finally, babies born to slaves were destined to be slaves. That was what happened to the descendants of Abraham between the end of Genesis and the beginning of Exodus in the Bible. As Genesis ended, Joseph had welcomed his brothers into Egypt as refugees to escape a famine in their land to the north. Finding refuge solved the famine problem, but refugee and minority status made them vulnerable to enslavement. As Exodus begins, the Hebrews, as Abraham's descendants were, uh, have been enslaved. And they have also grown in numbers, so much so that the Egyptians have begun to fear that they might rebel. In response, the Egyptian ruler, the pharaoh, calls for a gradual genocide by decreeing that all the male babies born to the Israelite slaves be thrown into the river Nile to drown. You can see how this strategy would leave the next generation of Hebrew women either barren or vulnerable to sexual enslavement by Egyptian men. After one generation, no more pure Hebrews would be born. Lament how genocide and slavery have been tragic parts of human history. It's still a problem now, um, here in this country, not just in far-flung places. But let's pray that um, slavery and genocide will never be part of our future history. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we cry because of what humans do to each other. Exert power over another. Use each other. Use people for their own purposes. Use people as slaves. Oppress people because of fear or power or greed or whatever motivation there might be. Lord, we are sorry. We cry out to you and pray that there will not be, I'll be too naive to say, there won't be any slavery, but Lord, we pray that they will root out the people who are enslaving others right now, that those lines will be exposed 
and people brought to justice. Almighty God, <clears throat> you show to those who are in error the light of your truth, that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant all those who are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may reject those things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our homes, our Lord, we pray, and drive far from them the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the day, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. May God bless us, that in us may be found love and humility, obedience and thanksgiving, discipline and gentleness and peace. Lord, grant us peace this night beneath your tender care. Your presence may we ever feel, your mercies ever share. Amen. That's it for tonight. Um, so I'm just going to relax for a bit, go to bed early and wait refreshed for 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, so I hope you will do the same. Be relaxed. Um, may God be with you. Have a good night's sleep. And grace, mercy and peace. Oh, don't forget Sunday morning. That's what I was going to say. Uh, Sunday morning, half past ten. Um, we are online for our regular uh, Sunday morning slot of worship. Um, so grace, mercy and peace be with you all.